Several years ago, I dropped out of university. And the reason why I start with that is because when someone stands on a stage and leads with something like that, the audience leans in and pays attention, right? Well, while I did indeed drop out of university, it was to change from computer science in Uganda to go to do animation in Malaysia. And so technically, I still am a university dropout. So the reason why I did was because of this image here. This image was a series of drawings that depicted a stick figure doing a cartwheel across a page. This to me was described as animation. The illusion of movement in an inanimate object or character that depicts life. I was amazed. I mean, what else could I make this stick figure do? Could I make him dance? Could I make him sing? Could I make him cry? Oh, the stories I could tell. My name is Raymond Malinga, and I am the CEO of the Creatures Animation, Com Creatures Animation Studio here in Kampala, Uganda. And we make cartoons. So, when people, you have to understand that when people, back, back in those days, when someone heard that you wanted to go and pursue a career in animation, you would often get reactions like, are you crazy? Will you make money? Will you achieve anything? How will you be useful in society? How will I be useful in society? That one hit particularly hard. But nevertheless, I took my risky flight and went to, an to animation school in Malaysia. And for a tenure of about four years, I finally graduated with my short film project, White Collar Time. Now, White Collar Time tells the story of a corporate worker living a boring, mundane, routine life who wants to exchange it for something much more exciting. And could you believe it? This short film went on to win multiple student awards across Asia. I mean, you have to understand, there I was, thank you. You have to understand, there I was, a computer scientist dropout from Uganda, traveling across Asia, winning awards, being offered money to start a company in Asia. But I chose a different route, landing an exciting job in a record-breaking, in a record-breaking, a uh, record-breaking uh, company, animation company there in Malaysia. And it was really amazing. You see, after that, messages started flowing in from back home. You have made it. You have achieved something. You are now useful in society. So naturally, after seven months, I quit my job. Yes. Um, you see, something had occurred to me. The stories I told, where I told them, and how I told them mattered. So returning to Uganda, I started Creatures Animation Studio with my brother in my parents' garage. And together, we endured the tedious journey that is launching a creative business in Africa. Oh, we enthusiastically tried to raise funds. We mustered up all kinds of words to convince people that we had a vision for the future. It was really difficult. But eventually, we gathered a ragtag team of individuals who believed in our vision. And together, for the next Two years, we started developing A Kalabande Ate My Homework. Now, A Kalabande Ate My Homework is a story about a schoolboy who goes to school 
and claims that a mythological creature has eaten his homework. A mytholi mythological creature called the Kalabanda. Play the trailer. One of you did not hand in your homework. Amir, tell me. Me? But, but, but. Tell me who did not hand in their homework. <laughs> it was you, wasn't it? Hmm? No, it wasn't me. Tell me, you know who it was. T teacher? Talk to me. Speak to me, child. Tell me who it was. Spill your secrets. Huh? A calabander ate my homework. But would it achieve anything? A Calabanda Ate My Homework went on to win six awards and earn 12 nominations across the globe, <laughs> including in 2018, we were featured at the Cannes Film Festival, the largest film festival in the world. <laughs> but were we making money? Creatures started applying animation in different ways, helping startup organizations explain their innovations much better, helping large organizations visualize their objectives, and helping people like you tell their stories, while we told our own. But were we useful? You see, we often encounter new ideas in the media we consume. And for the youth specifically, it's comics, novels, books, movies, and even cartoons. You see, these fictional worlds can play a pivotal role if they depict familiar people in familiar environments experiencing familiar problems and providing extraordinary solutions that are yet to materialize in the real world. Let's look at that stick figure again. A series of drawings showing a stick figure just doing a cartwheel. Let's look at it again. A series of drawings of a little boy claiming a calabander ate his homework. Once more, a series of drawings of solving a health crisis. Again, a series of drawings solving a transportation problem, or maybe a moment lost in history that can be revived through the power of animation or a potential future in a futuristic world. This is the spirit of the African animation industry. The idea that our stories can be used to inspire the next generation of visionaries by implanting a visual seed and stimulating that potential. Thank you. Creature's next project is Kiroho. Kiroho translates to spirituality in Kiswahili. And it's a story of a young African girl living in a fictional sub-Saharan African town, encountering typical sub-Saharan African problems and she awakens her kiroho and gains amazing abilities that she uses to fight the forces that threaten her town. So who knows, maybe now we're useful. And now you have to understand that the stories that we tell could inspire the next doctor who finds a cure for a disease, the next engineer who invents a 
unique mode of transportation, unseen, never before seen, or an architect who constructs and designs the next world wonder right here in the, in the continent of Africa, or even perhaps the next animator. Thank you. <laughs>